Okay, today we're going to do a cylinder head on a 5.4 liter Ford product. This is a 2004 Lincoln Navigator. Uh, if you're having a problem on your cylinder aid or uh, misfires on your left hand bank, it's going to be your cylinder head. A uh, common issue on these Fords. And while I don't get paid to stand around and uh, make videos and talk, I do ever get paid to do head jobs. So let's uh, get started on this one right away. You're going to want a 7 16th and a flathead screwdriver. You're going to start by removing this cover and the breather in assembly right here. Uh, we're going to do that now. Two bolts right here on the cover. Remove them. 7 16th, 11 millimeter, whatever you got in the pit. Okay, when you get your screws out, pop your cover off. Remember that screwdriver I talked about? You'll also have to undo your breather line and a air charge temperature sensor right here. So you want to disconnect your hoses all of them that pertain to the cooling system, uh, radiator hoses, uh, throttle cables, uh, cruise control, uh, a couple of your emission hoses here on this side here. You want to disconnect all of those, get them out of the way, because uh, the intake will be coming off. Hope you got a pan down there like I do. Start taking off your hoses, your electrical wiring, uh, you know, and if you think you're getting in over your head with uh, too many puzzle pieces, just remember that when you go to put this back together, uh, you know, you're going to have all these hoses and things, you're like, oh my God, I can't do it, this. I just can't do it. You know, just, just remember, these all are going to fall back into place uh, retrospectively of where they go. I've got them up on top of these lines here just to hold them out of my way, but if I put it back, you know, it's going to find its home. Uh, it's going to show you uh, basically the area. And um, if you got a camera, that might help you. Uh, like the harness I just did. If I throw it back in place, well, look, it, it almost wants to plug itself in, you know. So uh, just, just try and keep that in mind. And I fold it back out the way and I tuck it up underneath things uh, just to clear my working area. This one cable right here seems to get broken. Uh, more times so than any other. This uh, this one here, you'll be able to simply slide it out of the groove when you pull the uh, throttle on around. You'll see it's self-explanatory. This one uh, seems to, uh, people seem to like to break it. I don't know why. Uh, but all you have to do is push it forward. You'll see it slides out of the, just like that. And if I crack the throttle a hair, it'll fall right out of place. But And then to put it back on, you simply snap it back. Uh, I don't know why a lot of people like to put a screwdriver in here and just try and pop it straight back, but I see it way too many times, so I want to throw that tip out there. That is slotted. It slides in, uh, and that's that. Don't break it. Okay, next on the uh, passenger side of the intake, you're going to have this big cluster of hoses coming into the intake, followed by your big hose there, all leading down to your PCV valve right here. If you follow them all down right there, an easy way to disconnect all this stuff is simply to pull out the PCV valve out of the valve cover, follow this other hose on down to the engine, slide this clamp up, and disconnect the hose. Now all of it will come off with the intake. Okay. Got all the hoses, connectors, lines off of the intake, and we're ready to go. Now, back here at the very back of the intake, you'll have a series of 8 millimeters or 5 sixteenths, whichever you prefer. I prefer to use the right one, 5 sixteenths. Right here around the outside edges of this back strip on the intake. You'll have them on this side, you'll have them on this side. Now, what you got to do now is go ahead and let's take those out. I remember that screwdriver we had earlier. You'll want to put it in here and just pop the gasket. Before removing it, you're going to need to remove the plastic shielding at the bottom down here. 
There'll be a row of screws down here on the bottom of it. Just undo those, take that shielding out of the way. Okay, and once you have your back top off, you want to take out the bolts for the EGR, the back intake bolts on both sides, one down the middle, one at the each end of these runners here on the front, and uh, get ready to take off the upper intake plenum. You'll also have to undo the power steering reservoir brackets from the intake manifold, or the upper plenum. Okay, upper uh, plenum uh, come off pretty effortlessly. And uh, we're ready to uh, take off the lower section now, and it's going to be the same step as the last. You're just going to run down these side here, removing the bolts that attach, uh, disconnect these uh, uh, fuel injectors uh, one by one, move the harnesses out of the way, uh, and then we'll pick the intake up, slide it forward, and there'll be a special set of tools we'll need to disconnect these fuel lines, and uh, I'll show you how that works in just a second. Let's get busy uh, taking out these uh, rail bolts on this lower intake. So what I did was unplug the injectors, took out the bolts down either side. Now instead of uh, disconnecting the fuel lines at the back, back here with the uh, disconnect tool, it's kind of tight and the tools aren't going to be available to just anybody. What I did was I grabbed a hold of these injector lines and pulled them up, separating them from the injectors. That way I'll take the intake out in one piece, leaving the lines behind. Okay, so there we are with the intake out. Uh, relatively uh, easy job, huh? We don't get carried away yet. We're just not getting going good. All right, so what we're going to have is the left bank cylinder head. Left bank refers to the driver's side cylinder head. Cylinder 8 all the way at the rear. We're going to start by taking off this valve cover on this side. And uh, they're attached here on the outside edges as well as here through the middle bolts. But before we do that, we're going to want to start by taking off this cover here in the middle. This is covering up our coils, coil packs, and uh, little valleyways down there to our plugs. But before we can remove the valve cover, we're going to want to remove this cover to uh, get to the coils. Okay, so our cover's out of the way, and now you guessed it. Let's pull out these coils, unplug them, and uh, put them to the side. They just pull straight up. Pull them straight up, unplug them. Throw them to the side. Okay, the coils are all out of the way. Uh, next thing we're going to do is remove this EGR tube uh, right back here. This tube with the exhaust on it that runs all the way around the head and down there to the exhaust bank. Right down there is where it connects. So, what we got to do now is get that right there undone. Now, you'll see right here on the way down to there you have the steering knuckle and this bolt right here on the steering knuckle is where you can disconnect it now I've made sure I've got my steering wheel straight so when I reconnect it I don't know right where it goes but as you can tell that's right directly in the way of you getting down there to that bolt and if you just remove that and slide the steering knuckle the shaft out of there uh, you'll be able to get to that really easily and remove this whole tube assembly rather nicely Okay, got the steering uh, coupler took apart right there, as you can tell. I rehung the bolt right there so we don't lose that. Uh, just slide it back, and then there we have good access down there to the bolt holding on the EGR tube, which comes all the way out right here. So it's always a good thing to give this thing a good jiggle while you're unscrewing your nut there. That'll help uh, alleviate any tension you have down there and uh, let the tube come out really easy on you otherwise you'll be fighting that nut down there okay we removed the EGR tube uh, worked out real nice now we're going to remove this valve cover uh, which again entails in taking out these bolts uh, around the outside edges uh, and then you'll have a series of them down the middle and we'll take those out as well and then pop this cover out of place Okay, now once you've removed all your bolts and carefully insert you a screwdriver on the edge and give it a little prize up, carefully. Alright, this one come on up pretty easy. Yours may not come up pretty easy. We'll 
thing to remember if it doesn't pop up check for bolts do not force these covers you'll break them you will not be happy with yourself when you break one 